All right. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Jim De Palma. We are here at our studio here in Warren, New Jersey, and we're going to be talking about Takeo ECM circulators. With me today in the background is Christiane Levine. She's running, she's running the board, what we call the hot seat. Eric Hayes, our director of marketing, is with us today. He's running cameras. Takes a team to do this, and it's uh, it's always a pleasure to work with them. So, what we're going to do today. So we're going to talk about Takeo ECMs. We're going to talk about all the features and benefits of them. All right. So we'll give you a, a brief product presentation because you should know all the features and benefits because it does make these circulators very unique. But then we're going to go into why to use them. Why, why should we use them? Hey, the 007 has been working great for years. And, you know, I, I thank everybody that has bought them by the pallets over the years because you paid for my house. You put my kids through college. I really appreciate it. Uh, but, you know, you can't stop technology and technology marches forward and technology can improve products. And what we're going to focus on today after we get through features and benefits is the whys. Why should I add this to my system? What does this do to my system? If technology is marching forward and, it's, and our boilers are changing, our boilers are becoming more efficient. Well, let's make the heartbeat of the system more efficient. And if any of you were on Takeo After Dark last night, you heard take, uh, Davey Holdorf say, you know, the circulator, and not because Takeo is a circulator company, but the circulator really rules the hydronic system. Yes, the boiler makes the BTUs, but the circulator is what moves it through the system. All right, circulator is going to create a pressure differential. It's a pressure differential creating machine, as we like to say. And that's what's going to move the fluid through the system. So if I'm making a more efficient system, or if I'm the contractor and I sold Mr. and Mrs. Smith on using a more efficient boiler than what they currently had in the home, why not make the delivery part of the system even more efficient too? Because ultimately our goal is when we're putting in a hydronic system is to deliver comfort. I don't care whose boiler you're putting in, I don't care whose pump you're putting in, I don't care how you pipe it up, but if you don't make Mr. Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Smith comfortable, you didn't do your job. And that's our job. So if we can make them even more comfortable and make their system more efficient, we get the most out of our system. And, you know, we should be able to be even more profitable on these jobs. So we want to take advantage of what these products can do. So that's going to be the main focus today. So first and foremost, let's talk about the ECMs to take a lineup. Um, and, and let's talk about different reasons why Takeo had to do this. So there is this Department of Energy thing we got in this country here, and they do dictate in our industry different energy standards. And um, before the, the last administration came into office on the books with dates of when this was going to occur, we were told it, through the industry that you know our, our motors had to be more energy efficient. And that did go into effect on the commercial side. So our commercial circulators, our commercial pumps, those motors had to change. And as we were getting closer to the residential side of that coming into play, well, the administration changed, things like that were put on hold. So we've had a delay for, uh, for quite a, a while, but Takeo still had to gear up to be able to produce these products. So they, uh, went into a partnership, I guess, purchased a company called Ascol out of Italy. And they were the first company to make a DC variable speed circulator. So it wasn't Grunfuss, wasn't Wilo, it was Ascol. And if you are familiar with um, uh, mealy dishwashers or refrigerators, Bosch dishwashers and high-end aquariums, those are all Ascol DC variable speed circulators. So they've been doing this for a long time. This is wasn't this isn't something that they came up with over a year ago and had to put it together. Oh no, they purchased a very very well uh, known and, and industry tested technology. So because of that, now we are able to produce these ECM circulators across the board that can replace our standard double O's. So there's a couple of good things in there. Number one. As a wholesaler, the wholesaler doesn't have to carry as many SKUs because you're going to see going forward, 
that these ECMs can replace, you know, many double O's. You, Mr. Contractor, can have one or two style ECMs on your truck and really be prepared to any job you walk into. If it's a, a single pump, you know, with a zone valve, you can uh, have the, you know, the right pump for that job. If it's a zone pump system, you can have the right pump for that job just by stocking on your truck one or two style of our ECMs. All right, so a lot of advantages there. And again, the efficiencies, you know, the electrical efficiency because it's DC powered and just because it's variable speed, how it's gonna increase the efficiency of the system, how it's gonna save on fuel, basically, natural gas, oil or propane. Because if my, if my boiler's got some type of outdoor reset on it, if you've added outdoor reset to a cast iron boiler, like I did at home, and now I have a take a variable speed Delta T circulator on my system, my fuel bill went down 20%. That's a win-win, all right? And that's more savings versus what I'm gonna save on the electrical side of things. If it was a zone pump system, I could even see even more savings. And then if it's a condensing boiler system, having a variable speed circulator on that system side just makes sense because as the boiler is going to adjust its output based on outdoor temperature, well, the circulator will maintain whatever delta T, if you use the delta T circulator, or if you're going to use our P pump, it's still going to vary its speed based on zones opening and closing, giving us a longer run time and a more efficient boiler. Okay. We always joke that, you know, when's our equipment the most efficient? When's the boiler most efficient? When is the circulator most efficient? Obviously, it's when it's off. But when the equipment is running, we do want to take advantage of a longer runtime to get the most efficiency. And these products, these circulators, can help achieve that in our system. So you can see we have a nice breadth of line here. You can see the 007E in the middle there. That picture was a 0018, uh, 1819. I forgot what that was called, but now it's really the 0015E3. We have the 0018E, which is really cool. It's got Bluetooth technology, infinite speeds. You think a three-speed pump is worth the money? What if I sold you a circulator that has endless speeds on it? All right, there's a, there's a buy for you. We have that. We have our Delta T circulator, the VT Delta T, which is the only circulator on the market that if you want to maintain a specific Delta T, no matter what's happening in your system, no matter what your boiler does, that circulator can do it. Nails the system curve every time. And now we're getting into bigger circulators, bigger GPM, bigger head, the 0026E, which came out for us this year, the 0034E. All right, so we're gonna be able to replace all the different 00s that we've had over the years with this ECM family. So let's start talking about features and benefits right off the get-go. So the 0070, as you can see on the screen, it's got a couple of really unique features and benefits. One of the first ones to call out is the nut grabber <laughs> on the volume. all right? You can buy this circulator as a two flange or four-way flange. And we call this the nut grabber because when I put the nut in there, there's it's beveled in here to hold that nut in place. So you don't need three hands when you're tightening it up. All right, so that's a big deal. Believe it or not, when you talk about that to a contractor, he understands it, he gets it. We have lights. Our circulator has a light on it, all right? Which is a big deal because I got into the business in 1990 and I always heard from contractors, you know, I love your product, but I can't tell if it's working. You know, it'd be kind of like a, a, a compliment and they'd also be complaining at the same time. I can never tell if it's working. We'd have to put the screwdriver against it and hold it up against our head to see if it was really working or not. Well, that light's gonna tell you how we're working, what mode that we're operating in, and if the circulator had a problem, if the system had a problem, the circulator can absolutely uh, sense that and save itself. So you guys can come back and fix the problem. Uh, you can see it's a little bit different type of configuration. This is a, a plastic body. This is where the circuit board is, where the black part is. Oh, I'm sorry, where the black part is. This is actually the motor. And this is where the circuit board is. And since it's not a metal body, it's only a two wire, we don't need a ground. We give you knockouts on top or bottom. And when you do take the cover off, 
it's a Molex plug, so you can unplug it, put your wire connections in there, and plug it back in. So you got a nice big box so you can get your fingers in there, but you can even unplug it and work outside the circular. Some nice advantages here. It's a variable speed circulator, so there's no programming. It's going to uh, sense a resistance against the impeller, and that's when it will change its speed. Because it's a DC motor, our max power consumption is 44 watts. We take a 007 is an 80 watt, so we're almost 50% less, and that's at full speed. And as we vary speed, we can get down to four watts. So again, if you had a wall of circulators up there, that could be a substantial energy savings. But the cool part right up front is that this still is a cartridge circulator, all right? Deco double O's are water lubricated cartridge circulators. This is still a cartridge circulator, as you can see. Um, I don't know how well we'll see this on air. Hey, that's actually pretty good. You can see the hole in the middle of the shaft. So that's where the system fluid goes and that keeps us lubricated. This is our permanently magnetized rotor. This is the DC rotor. And as you'll see going forward, that is our bio barrier. And I'll explain what that does in a second. But what's really neat is when, this, when the circulator's running, what it, can, what it does. So it's, it's running dry, so you can hear a little bit of noise. All right, so we're running. And you can see the light. And I'm either going to get an orange light right now, and that would be normal operation, or now it's flash, it'll see it flash white. That's because there's no water, there's no resistance around the impeller. So the, the circulator thinks it's cavitating. It thinks the impeller is surrounded by air. So it speeds up in order to burp that air out of the volute. And it'll do that on its own. If at any point, during this operation, the circulator gets bound up. It gets bound up because of black iron oxide gumming up the system. I'm gonna recreate that for you by grabbing the impeller and holding on real tight. I'm gonna put it on the table. I, I, I know it's, I can't hold it up. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but right now it's vibrating, vibrating really hard and it's going up to high speed because it's trying to free itself. This is the sure start feature. And when it's in that process, I'm going to get a blinking, I'm going to get a red light. All right, let's see if it, it'll do it again. You see it shaking? <laughs> I'm holding on really hard and it's trying to free itself. And if it can't free itself after a hundred tries, it'll go to a red solid light, it'll lock itself out, and protect itself so you guys can come back and see what the obstruction was in the system okay there's no other circulator out there like this and that's a big deal that's a big deal for the contractor and why is that a big deal well if i'm a contractor and i sell service agreements with my systems which is a great business model and you know the system has been off all summer long and now i come back in the in the fall time we get that first call for heat if there was a chance that the circulator could have been gummed up because of black iron oxide in the system, the circulator is going to work to free itself and it'll probably free itself without even uh, generating a service call. So Mr. and Mrs. Smith aren't even going to even know it. You don't get a call to dispatch one of your techs to go out there and free the circulator. So you guys should know what I'm talking about because over the years, my competitors, guys would have to go back and give the circulator a swat with a hammer to loosen it up because of black iron oxide. So our sure start feature has protects us from that problem. So we got the auto air blocking. So if there's air trapped around the volute, a uh, trap in the volute around the impeller, it'll burp itself on its own. So no call back there. And if I get gummed up because of black iron oxide, the sure start feature will unlock the rotor and the circulator will start to run. So if I don't get a hoo for that, I don't know what's going on. Are there any questions on that? Because that's a big deal. We have that on all of our ECM circulators. Anything, Chris? No. Because they're, they're just absolutely blown away by it. I understand that. I understand. So we're going to run cooler. We're going to use 85% less electric. But again, that's nothing to really write home about. That's not the key feature. The key feature, auto uh, air blocking, the sure start and the variable speed because we're going to end up saving more on fuel in the system. 
So if I go forward, again, here's more detail you can see on the screen uh, of our uh, impeller, and you can see the holes around there to make sure that you know system fluid's washing through there. There is the eye of the uh, eye of the impeller right there that's where we put the water through and once it's filled it's filled and that's how we're water lubricated circulator now here's where i'm showing you the bio barrier that bronze looking barrier behind the uh, impeller and what is that all about well there's black iron oxide in our systems the similar metals cause black iron oxide so we'll have cast iron in our systems we'll have copper and that'll cause corrosion which is black iron oxide and if you're really not sure what that is, if anybody you know has replaced a uh, uh, boiler and they're draining the system, the water comes out kind of black, that's what black iron oxide is. It's really iron you know, deposits in the water. And since it's a permanently magnetized rotor, it's a DC powered rotor, direct current. It's a perm permanent magnet. It's a very powerful magnet, by the way, okay? Just to show you. Very powerful magnet. Okay. It's going to attract. Should I do that again, Chris? So they can see it. All right. Very powerful magnet. Okay. It's net, we can't turn it off. So all summer long, when the system's not running, that magnet's going to be attracting black iron oxide to it. So the bio barrier stops that from coming in and gumming up our circulator. We're the only company out there that has that. Our competitors that have DCM circulators don't have that feature. So they are encouraging people to use what? Magnetic dirt separators on the system. Now, Taco makes it too, all right? But is it needed for my circulator? No, it's not needed because of the bio barrier and the sure start feature. So those are two very important features to talk about to the contractor. Now, okay, here we go. So now, where do I use this? Why do I use this? What's the performance of this? You know, the 007's been working great for me for years, and it's a better price point. All right, well, let's talk about what this is going to do. So what you see on your screen right now is the pump curve on the 007. And why is the pump curve on the 007, or why has the 007 been the circulator of choice for so long, is it's a flat curve circulator. And if you're doing baseboard systems, convector systems, it is a large GPM low head pump. We need to move volume and our systems that have these type of heat emitters don't have high head. So this is why the 007 has worked so well. It's a long flat curve. And our systems traditionally, your common systems, BTU wise, are about you know 50, 65, 75, 85, 100,000 BTUs. And when we pick a circulator, right, we have to pick a circulator based on GPM and head. So there's two very important formulas that we use every day. I'm gonna go back here to the whiteboard. And right up here is the universal hydronic formula. GPM equals BTUH divided by delta T times 500. So 99% of the time, we're going to be using a 20 degree delta on our cast iron or high temp systems. So if we're using a 20 degree delta, it would be 20 times 500, which is 10,000. So whatever that boiler BTU is, the net, if we divide it by 10,000, that will give us our GPM. So if it was a 50,000 BTU boiler, and I'm gonna divide that by 10,000, that's gonna tell me I'm gonna have five GPM. Pretty simple, all right? And if you're you know, math phobic, all you gotta do is just take the comma and move it to the left one spot, there's your GPM. So if it was 100,000 and I divide that by 10,000, it's gonna be 10 GPM. So whatever your boiler BTU is, if it's going to be a 20 degree system, we divide it by 10,000, that gives us our GPM. So we have to always size our circulator. Why do you think Takeo's had all these double O's? We've got a lot of double O's. We start now with 003 and we go up to 0018, actually no, 0034 now. 
all right? It's because we need different circulators for different GPM. And then the other part of the equation is overcoming the head loss or the pressure drop through the system. Moving the water through the pipes, through the valves, through the fittings, all right? Through any type of air, dirt separators, all right? Any of that stuff, plus the head loss through the boiler, oh, the head loss through the coil of the indirect. We have to overcome that and we call that head. Now, in the Takeo catalog, you know, we give you these formulas and the quick formula to figure out head here is called the longest loop method, where we take whatever the longest loop is in the system. This is a system if we're going to be running with zone valves and a single pump. We take whatever that longest loop is, we multiply it by 1.5. We want to add 50%. Because if I'm doing any retrofit work, renovation work, I really can't see the piping going through the system anymore. So I'm going to add 50%. It's a fudge factor. Okay. Then we're going to multiply it by 0 0.04. By doing that, I'm making sure I don't move the fluid over four feet per second. We don't want to create any velocity noise or erode any heat exchangers. And that'll give us our head loss. So to give you an example, a common conversation we have with contractors when it comes to sizing the circulator is when we get to the head and we ask them what long, how long the loop is, <clears throat> and they're kind of walking it off in their mind and they're talking to me I'm like, well, the house is you know 30 feet wide, I go 25 feet back, up to the second floor, you know, about 60, 75, 80, all right, call it 100. All right, so if it's 100, it's 100 times 1.5 times 0.04, and because I do this all the time, I know that is six. All right, so that means six feet of head. So you can plug in any number you want and do that math and come up with your head loss. Now that is a educated guesstimate. Those aren't super hard numbers on the head because again, we're adding 50% to this, all right? Because I can't see all the T's, elbows, valves, fittings, what have you. But if you've got a chart for all elbows, T's, you know, ball valves, all of that, and somebody's building the system from scratch, you can figure out the head right dead nuts on. But this is what we've been using in the industry forever. So now that I know my GPM and head, let's say it's going to be 50,000 BTUs at six feet ahead, I go down to the, the chart here and I find my five GPM and I find my six and where they cross is going to be right at that spot. So that's why that 007 is going to work because I'm below the system i'm below the pump curve and i can handle that gpm and head boom that's how i picked the circulator so now what's going to happen what actually happens when the system's running and it's called a system curve and what will actually happen is even though i want to be right there on paper i will follow a system curve and i'll go over that in a little bit more detail in a few more slides and i'll end up running about right here so i'll probably be moving a GPM or maybe a GPM and a half more, and I'll be running above that six feet ahead. So what does that mean? I squeeze down the delta T. Instead of maintaining a 20 degree temperature difference, instead of putting out 180 and getting back 160, I'm gonna be running maybe at a 15, 16 degree delta, all zones open, design degree day. And guess what? We've been doing that forever. Nobody got hurt. Nobody complained, we're heating the house, everybody's happy. But what if my circulators could adjust? What if my circulators could change their output based on system demand, okay? Well, let's look and see what happens. So the 007E, the curve is completely different. You can see it's a flat curve up to about eight GPM, and technically it's up to about 8.25 GPM. And if I take my universal hydronics formula and do it in reverse, all right, instead of dividing by 10,000 on a 20 degree delta, multiplying it, that 8.25 becomes 82,500 BTUs. So this circulator now will change its speed as zone valves open up to 8.25 GPM. And as it's changing its speed, as it's running across that 10 foot ahead mark, it'll hold 10 feet ahead, and as zone valves open and close, it's gonna run across there. It'll use less wattage and deliver closer to the GPM that the system actually needs based on the amount of zones that open. That's a pretty good deal, all right? Because a single speed circulator is gonna do what? It's gonna do run at one speed and give you one GPM 
and one head loss or you know head pressure. But now if it could vary, I should get better system performance and I should get more comfort because remember, we knock ourselves out to figure out how many BTUs we need in the house. God forbid Mr. and Mrs. Smith is cold. But remember, how often are we at those design conditions? Right here in Warren, our average coldest 80 years, 14. If we go down to Piscataway, guess what? It's 14. Mm -hmm. How often do we see 14 in our, in, our, in our territory here or below that? Less than 2% of the time. At 500 on hours here, a 500 hours of heating here, I should say, we're running at 2,500 on hours and less than 2% of the time are we actually even going to be at design conditions, All right? So this is very important, why we have to size our circulators properly, okay? And now you can see the advantage of a variable speed that will adjust on its own. There's no programming. It's going to do it based on resistance against the impeller, right? As the zones open and close, it'll change its resistance. And once that resistance changes, the circuit board notices that and changes the speed because it, it because it can because that's how it's programmed all right any questions on that i find this fascinating so very simple math this is what we do in our systems this is explains why we want to take advantage of our ecms so one of the things we do a lot in our hydronic training is we always ask contractors well what kind of a system do you put in or which is better is it a circulator system or a zone valve system i happen to like zone valves but we go to bigger systems, and if it's a bigger system, they may not want to use just a circulator with zone valves. So what we decided here at the headquarters here at Wales Darby, right? We got together, we put ourselves in a closed room, spent hours trying to figure this out, and we decided that if it's 130,000 BTU system and less, we're gonna go with a zone valve system. And if it's now at 130,000 or greater, we're gonna go with a zone pump system and the reason for that is if i'm in the 150s 160s 170s you know and i'm talking 15 16 17 gpm for the system and i have one small zone open up i don't want to have a big circulator trying to push that you know system fluid through that one small zone because i definitely will create velocity noise and since majority of the heating season i'm at like 50 60 percent capacity that delta T will be down to single digits, maybe even one or two degrees. There's a short cycling uh, system, and that costs the homeowner money. But if I size each loop with a specific circulator, I can avoid that. So two examples that we like to use. On the left-hand side, I got a boiler system where I got 85,000 load, okay? So to figure out what my GPM and head is, we're gonna use our universal hydronics formula plug in 85,000 BTUs divided by 10,000. I think Ranger's on our, our webinar today, so Ranger knows immediately it's 8.5 GPM. Great. I focus on 137 foot long zone because that is the zone I have to make sure I can overcome the resistance through. I'm gonna use my head loss formula in there. I'm gonna plug 137 in, all right, times 1.5. Let me get to my calculator. So I got 137 times 1.5 times 0 0.04. And what do you get? 8.22. We can call it eight feet ahead. So now we know our GPM hit for that system. Now the other system is 175,000 BTUs and it's five zones. I'm going to do each zone with a circulator. Now, Normally, everybody would fill that up with 007s. And again, I thank you because you really took care of my family. But I got better options for you today where we can get as close as we need to per zone. So let's do some math. So if we do the first job at 85,000 and 137 foot long uh, foot run, I'm looking down here at eight and a half GPM. Chris, just to help me out, can we make that screen a little bit bigger, please? Thank you, because people accuse me of not being able to see. All right, so eight and a half is going to be right here. And I got to overcome eight feet of head. I'm going to plot it right there. And when that system is running, I'm going to drift based on the system curve, which again, we'll go over in a moment. I'll be operating right here. 
right on the curve at a max speed of 44 watts. And then as the zones open and close, since I'm on the medium speed, I will follow this 10 foot of head mark and change my GPM, but keep that pressure up to follow 10 feet of head. So I'm getting much, much closer to the system curve and better performance for my um, overall system. Now, if we do the 175 with five zones, this is pretty cool. I didn't give you a GPM per zone. So if we do some simple math, it's 35,000 BTUs per zone. So that's three and a half GPM. But now the first zone is 62 feet long, okay? Well, I know 50 feet by doing my head loss formula. At, uh, 100 foot was six, 50 is gonna be three. That 62 is not gonna be too much more. And if we plug in the numbers, oh, it's 3.72. We can almost call it four feet ahead. So I could set up that circulator on now low at three and a half, set it at five. I need to be here, just it's gonna be here about four, but it'll slightly drift up here following the curve. So I'll over pump by one GPM and I'll squeeze the delta just a little bit, okay? Last night's theme for Takeo After Dark was Get Smart. So it missed it by just that much, if you guys remember that show. But if it was a 007, it would have been performing because the 007 E curve is very close to the seven curve. It would have been performing way out here. So I probably would have over pumped by one and a half to two GPM and then my Delta T would be squeezed down to single digits. So if we go to the next one, 89 foot, all right, well, that's going to be slightly under six feet ahead because I know hundred foot was worth six. So if we do some math times 1.5 times 0.04, it's a little over 5.34 feet ahead. What are you trying to do? <laughs> I've got talented people around Sorry. me and they like to tease me. So it's at 89 feet ahead, it's just over five feet ahead. So again, I'm setting that circulator at low at five and it's gonna perform brilliantly anytime that zone calls. We're gonna nail the curve that we need for that zone. And we're gonna do this per zone. So what I'm showing you here is I got a 0015 E3, the same characteristics as a 007 E. You get three settings. You notice I didn't call them speeds because they're not speeds. They're three settings. At low, it's variable speed and it'll hold up to five feet ahead out to 12 GPM or 120,000 BTUs. And it'll change its speed as zones open and close. At medium, it follows the 007 E curve. It's the exact same curve. And at high, now it's not variable speed, but we can go up to a maximum of, uh, what is that, 18 feet ahead. And there we don't, we follow just the pump curve. It's not variable speed. But now I'm taking Mr. Contractor, I'm giving him a variable speed circulator, walk onto a job with five zones, and he can tune each one just by picking which mode, I don't want to say speed, but I pick low, medium, or high based on the characteristics of that zone. That's pretty good, all right? That's better than pretty good. I should get a, a hoo for that one, all right? Chris, did, are they typing in hoo ah hoo ah No? Come on, Ranger, type it in, baby. All right. And on the box, we also dictate, on the box, we're telling the contractor, if you set it at this you know, at, at low, medium, or high, how it's gonna perform. We tell you how much baseboard or how long a loop it can, it can handle, all right? So another great advantage of what we do with these circulators, just even in the marketing and the packaging, okay? So this is what you'd see on the boxes, the 0015E3, you could see low can hand up to 85 feet of a three quarter loop, at medium, 165 feet at a three quarter loop, and at high up to 245 feet on a three quarter loop. My competitors, the red guys, don't give you that information. And it's up to the contractor to try to figure that out, okay? Now, if you really want to get down to really give them the best performing system, we have our VT2218. So back in the day, Takeo came out with the Bumblebee. All right, we had the smart car, everything was yellow, they dropped out of the green color. The Bumblebee made a big splash and it's a Delta T circulator. 
And what does that mean? It comes with two thermistors, one that would go on the supply side, one that will go on the return. And you can program in on the circulator what delta T you want to to preserve or produce anytime any system, any zone calls in the system. This circulator is the only one on the market that will match the delta at any time. So I want you to think about this. I now have a condensing boiler, or I've got a cast iron boiler with outdoor reset on it. And if the boiler's output is going to vary because our temperature outside is going to vary, the heat loss we do is only for the coldest day of the year, and we're going to be most of the time at 50, 60 percent capacity. All right. So if the boiler output can change, why can't my circulator change? So if my output, if I need 100,000 BTUs on the coldest day of the year, but most of the time I only need 50,000 BTUs, the circulator doesn't care what the boiler produces. All it wants to do is maintain, <clears throat> excuse me, maintain whatever delta T you want in your system. So I can maintain a 20 degree delta, 10, 15, whatever you choose based on system demand. So this is where I can really start to show you what a system curve thing is all about. So let's say on this particular job, you need 7.5 GPM and you have to overcome nine feet ahead. So that's 75,000 BTU boiler on a 20 degree delta and nine feet ahead happens to be a 150 foot long loop. Everybody follow me? If you want to plug in the math and double check me, you can, but it's a 75,000 BTU net boiler. I have to overcome 150 feet. So I plot it on my curve and on the double O curves, it happens to fall right under the double O eight, not a double O seven. It's above the double O seven curve. So we're going to double O eight. So if you look at that red curve, it's a higher head pump than the double O seven. So now what's going to happen? Well, there is this thing called a system curve, all right? And this is physics. We can't manipulate this, all right? The only thing we could do if it's a single speed circulator is follow the pump curve. So what will actually happen is even though I plot it at that seven and nine, seven and a half at nine, it's actually going to work where you see it's plotted on the curve now, which is going to be about nine at 11. So instead of moving 75,000 BTUs, I'm moving 90, okay? And instead of uh, overcoming nine feet ahead, I'm overcoming 11 feet ahead. That means I'm going to move the fluid faster. That means I'm going to squeeze down my delta T. So now, and that's at design conditions, because that's the way we designed it. But now what happens if it's multiple zones opening and closing? Okay. So now here we're showing you if we have two zones operating. Since I got three, you know, it's 75,000, let's call each one 25,000 BTUs. So with two zones, I only need 50,000 BTUs. But in reality, I have to follow this 008 curve and I end up moving six and a half GPM or 65,000 BTUs. And now I'm up to about 13, 14 feet ahead. So with two zones calling, the circulator doesn't know what's happening. It's gonna maintain that single speed and I'm squeezing down the delta T even more. And one zone calls, and I only need 25,000, but I'm actually moving four GPM, and now I'm up to 15 feet of head, okay? And we can solve for what that actual delta T is gonna be. So you can see up there, there's our universal hydronics formula. We can figure out GPM. We can reverse it and figure out BTU if we know the GPM. And then if we divide BT, uh, uh, G, I'm sorry, BTU by GPM and divide that by 500, we can figure out the delta T. So with all zones calling, <clears throat> we're actually maintaining a 16 degree delta, which in our world is damn good. Again, we've been doing it forever. But now what happens when two zones call, if we do the math, it would be 50,000 BTUs divided by nine, divided by 500. We're gonna get a 15 degree delta. Okay, still not too bad. But now when one zone calls, it's 25,000 BT, 25, BTUs divided by nine, divided by 500. And now we're down to 12. And that's at design conditions. That means that's at our coldest day of the year, that's 14 degrees. What are you going to get when it's at 
40 degrees outside or 45 degrees, we're going to be single digits. And this is the short cycling that can happen. And if the boiler has been oversized over the years, and we know that never happens, right? Everybody always sizes their boilers properly. But if the boiler has been oversized over the years, that short cycling costs money. This is where variable speed, ECM, Tago circulators, this is where they prove their worth because we're going to, we can almost avoid short cycling depending on which circulator we use. If we're doing it by delta T, we can greatly reduce that even if the boiler is oversized, all right? And if you want to really nail super system efficiency, I use this on a condensing system on my system side, not the boiler itself, the system side. Whatever the boiler produces, that circulator will maintain whatever delta T I want. So if I'm feeding a radiant zone, or if most of the house is radiant, and I want to nail a 10 degree delta, I'll nail a 10 degree delta at all times or 20 degree, whatever I want. So how does it install? Does it look any different on the job? Yeah, you're gonna see two thermistors, one on the supply, one on the return. Comes with the circulator, you wire it in. It comes out of the box set for a 20 degree delta, okay? And I can program in any delta that I want. I wanna put some armor flex over those thermistors so I'm only sensing the pipe temperature, not any ambient air, and off I go. And it'll do this automatically, okay? So again, this is what I have on my system at home. I have a cast iron. I probably bought one of the last standing pilot cast iron boilers when I had to change my system. And I put a Taco control on it. I put a ZVC 406 EXP controller on there, my Taco zone century zone valves, and I plugged in our PC 700. So now I have outdoor reset on my cast iron and I vary the speed as my zones open and close. I save 20%. System is much quieter, and I've got better comfort through my house. And I can prove that I got better comfort in my house because I have a very specific thermometer at home. And for you guys who are married, you know what I'm talking about. And my wife tells me wherever she goes in the house in the winter time, the house is just more comfortable than it used to be because I was short cycling. I was oversized before, so the boiler size much closer, but still my short cycling is is gone because of the outdoor reset I added and the variable speed circulator and the comfort level is completely different in my home. And the bottom line is we need to deliver comfort. So that's a big deal. So now what would happen as the zones open and close with a Delta T circulator, we adjust. The circulator will adjust and match the GPM and head. Oh, I only need two, it adjusts. Oh, I only need one, it adjusts. It makes a new curve. So to, to wrap that up, the P pumps get us close to the system curve. The Delta T pump nails the system curve. And that's something to take advantage of. There's a premium, you pay for that. But I shouldn't be losing the job based on the price of the circulator. I, I should be talking it up that I'm gonna give them a better performing system, okay? You know, this is all what's in it for that customer, okay? What's in it for them? Hey man, Mr. Contractor, you're going to make more on this because yeah it costs you more but there's more percentage on your profit take advantage of that guys so you can see we can run between a 5 and 50 degree delta here on the vt2218 and we want to take advantage of it you'll you'll look at this pump curve there isn't one we run anywhere within that green band and if by chance we have to go below the bottom curve that a curve well we're just going to follow the a curve all right but we can run as high as 22 feet of head at you know one or two you know one gpm eh, really 20 g 20 feet ahead at one gpm okay but it will run anywhere within that green curve or that green area if you really want to get fancy and pick a specific curve and we have guys that will use this circulator picking a specific curve if they're going to use it with a hydronic coil so if I'm feeding air handlers with hydronic coils and I want to maintain a specific GPM and head, if I figure it out, you can use, you know, a fixed speed curve if you want to. All right. We have a lot of guys that will use it at variable speed or fixed speed, and they'll take this supply water sensor and hang it in the airstream. Because one of the bigger complaints on a hydronic 
coil system is that when the fan comes on, the coil's really not up to temperature yet. We can't delay the fan long enough. I blew, I blow cooler air until the coil gets hot enough and, and before the people are comfortable. So now if I'm sensing air supply temperature and return more to temperature, the circulator can speed up to maintain whatever delta you want. Better system comfort and it works out great, right? Now to take this a notch further, we came out with the 0018E. I believe we came out with this late last year. Is that correct? Yeah. My team is nodding yes, all right? They're waving pom-poms and shooting fireworks behind me. It's great. So the 0018E is an infinite, infinitely variable speed circulator with Bluetooth. Oh my God. So what does that mean? I have the ability to really just wrap this up in a nutshell. I have the ability to hook the circulator up and going with the Bluetooth path, going on my phone, and I can run it in fixed speed, and it'll tell me. I'll get a blue screen, and on the screen, I'll see my performance dot, right, the duty point, and it tells me what GPM and head the system is actually running at with all zones open. So I can either lock it in there, or I can go to a constant pressure mode if it is zone valves, and then set it to whatever curve I need. So I know when all zones are all operating, I'm operating precisely at the GPM and head I have to. And then it'll follow that head loss uh, pump curve as the zones open and close very speed, all right? That is pretty amazing. That allows us to actually see what's happening inside the piping, okay? Very sophisticated circulated, but very easy to program. If you got people that are into active adapt, it has the active adapt mode on there. And again, you can see it on your Bluetooth app, right? You have to be within the boiler room to do that. It's not a Wi-Fi enabled type of app, but pretty remarkable. Nobody has something like that. So if somebody thinks Taco's not sophisticated enough, you know, they're behind the times, nobody's got a circulator like this. You know, you really, you got that guy who's that, that, that zealot, that hydronic zealot, he wants to stand out, go with the 0018E. And then, like I said, we've added bigger double O's. The 0026E came out. Again, another pressure pump. And you can see based on the screen what we can replace now with a circulator. So this is getting us into light duty commercial or larger homes or light duty commercial because now i can replace my 0010s 11s 12s which are very popular as popular circulators for us a uh, stainless or cast iron with a variable speed delta t circulator and i can also now get into our 2400 series which is a light duty commercial circulator that we move a lot of and now i can do it with ecm technology okay and then we get into a bigger unit called the 0034E. Again, more GPM, more head, and we can overcome or replace, I should say, all these different 00s, 2400s, and the VR3452, okay? And all these replacements are always listed right on the box. No guessing, all right? So if I'm running to the warehouse to get it, I want to make sure it's going to replace what the customer needs to be replaced. There it is right on the box. No guess. Always explaining how to set the dial. Always explaining. Let's hold it this way. Here we go. Always explaining the different modes of operation and how to set it. Okay. Very, to me, very, very impressive. Even the packaging. Even the packaging. All right. We open this up, and I'll, I'll move it up here so we can all see it, right? Even when I open this up, open up the packaging, you know, circulator is not going to move. They come with a uh, IFC. My smaller ones come with IFCs, which would be up here. So the contractor sees it, so you can choose whether to use it or not. I've seen these things dropped, and... Nothing happens because of how well it's packaged. Just, you don't see any paper in here, right? This is set to not move. Okay, so the packages, packaging is even very impressive there too. So at this point, you guys should be super excited to go out and sell this product. Okay, we are here to help. We'll make any contractor calls with you to explain the features and benefits. 
as things open up, we hope to do more uh, training out there in the field face-to-face uh, -face so the contractors can see this stuff in uh, an operation and understand its uh, capabilities and how they can make better systems and make more money with this product. Do we have any questions there? Man, I must be really good. I just answer them all myself. All right. Well, at this point, I'm good to go. All right. So I thank you for your time. It's always a pleasure doing these for you and we'll see you next time.